I've always rather admired Bentley's naming strategy for its performance models. No random letters, just speed. And now there's a new Continental GT Speed, available both in the coupe, which we'll come to in a bit, and this, the convertible version here in flame orange. Now, you can tell that it's the Continental GT Speed because of a few things. So it gets a darker grille, both up here and down there. This has actually got the black pack on it as well. Huge 22 inch wheels come as standard. This has got the optional carbon ceramics on it as well, 440 millimeter discs and 10 piston calipers. And we've got different sills down here and just here, 12, because this has of course got the W12 engine in it. Now up to 650 brake horsepower, up 24 brake horsepower on the standard W12. Torque remains exactly the same at 664 pounds foot, which is 900 Newton meters. That means not 60, three and a half seconds, top speed, 208 miles an hour, which is not actually that much speedier because it's only one mile an hour faster in top speed and 0.1 of a second faster to 60 miles an hour. But it's not all about straight line. We'll come back to that in a bit as well. The W12 starts slightly more enthusiastically in the speed, but as you set off, the three-chamber air suspension feels as supple as a normal Continental GT. Inside the speed, well, the differences are principally you get this lovely dark tinted turned aluminium all around here. You also get the diamond in diamond quilted stitching on the doors and the seats. You get the little speed stitched into the headrests back there and you get half leather and half Alcantara, which obviously feels particularly nice on the steering wheel. As we left behind us the pretty, if narrow, streets of Fizzini and headed out into the hills, we realised we had company. This is what I like about Italy. You know, for me for a second, the beautiful for me. We met these guys up where we were doing the statics and they've got um, little refuse trucks, little dustbin lorries. And the guy behind me saw us and he set off in hot pursuit and he's now pedalling the thing for all it's worth behind us <laughs> and beeping. <laughs> you have to love Italy. <laughs> it is worth just mentioning that with the roof up, they say this is, well, it's, it's three decibels quieter than the last convertible. They also say it's as quiet as the previous Continental GT Coupe. Speed variants have always been very popular, simply because they represent the top of the tree. People like to have the most expensive model, and if it also happens to be the fastest, then so be it. But what if you don't just want the badge and the bragging rights? What if you do really crave some extra dynamism? Well, for a start, you'll want the coupe. Because to be honest, the convertible is very nice, particularly in Sicily, on a sunny day. But I've never felt that it's structurally been the most rigid car. So to really test the handling, we found ourselves a candy red coupe and then headed, perhaps surprisingly, back into town. From 1983 to 1991, Comiso Air Base was the largest NATO base in Southern Europe, but no one has been here for 14 years. A lap of the facility first takes us round the seven hardened concrete bunkers where BGM 109G ground launched cruise missiles were stored. These were only designed to carry W84 thermonuclear warheads. Then it's through the fuel station, combined fuel economy 20.6 mpg if you're interested, before a quick trip into the fire station, which ironically has caught fire at some point. Past the red and white water tower and then it's into the residential sector, complete with a school and enough housing for 2,000 people. This would make a great rally stage through here with all these houses. Past the silent supermarket and a theatre that's seen its last curtain call before diving through a gateway. And this brings a whole new meaning to swimming pool complex. Round the back of the theatre, under some barbed wire, past another fire station and then back to the beginning for another standing start. Love that sound. So in here we've got three modes, as with the standard Continental. We've got Comfort and Bentley, which are by and large the same as before. 
because with this one, rather than just sort of stiffening everything up, making it all a little bit more focused, they wanted to well, increase the bandwidth, I suppose. So keep that comfort in there, make it still a Bentley, as people like to say. But then when you put it into sport mode, which we've got here, that's when things get interesting. This has obviously still got the eight speed dual clutch auto in it, but the shifts in sport, again, they've ramped it up for sport mode, so they're twice as quick for this speed. Up to 95% of the torque can be sent to the rear wheels in sport mode, and it will apportion it rearwards more readily too. Part of the reason it can do this is because there is now an electronic limited slip differential between the rear wheels, using clutch packs to distribute the torque from side to side. We've also got rear wheel steer for the first time on the Continental GT. We've seen it on the Flying Spur before, but not on this. In most cars with the system, the rule of thumb is that the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to the fronts at low speed to increase agility, and then in the same direction at high speeds to improve stability. With the Bentley, it's slightly more complex. They've tuned the algorithm so that actually, say, on the entry to a corner, it can maybe sort of give you a little bit more stability and then start steering in the opposite direction to give you more agility as you get further into the corner. One of the interesting things with this is that they've changed the, the normal steering, as it were, so the rack at the front, which normally is a variable ratio rack off-center. With this, it's linear because we've got the rear wheel steer, so in order to make it easier to kind of tune that rear steer and make it all work together, they've changed the rack, which is I think it's interesting. I also think it's interesting that they've stuck with the standard Conti GT's P0 rubber rather than going for anything more extreme. It's another indication that the brief was to retain a real breadth of ability. It is definitely still a GT, but it's an impressively dynamic one. <laughs> Having a closed road is just the coolest thing. I love the fact that when this does step out, it still feels actually remarkably controllable. It doesn't feel like all that way. Yes, you can feel it moving around because they haven't dialed the 48 volt anti-roll system up sort of so hard so you don't get any roll at all. So it does feel quite sort of natural with all that weight. You can work with it. <laughs> and the really nice thing is it's just, it is still so precise actually, it doesn't feel like it's going to hang you out to drive, despite being really, obviously still a heavy car and it still weighs what, 2,300 kilos. Of course, for all that this is huge amounts of fun, I'm well aware that this is also not the real world. And for all that it's fun, this is not a car that you really want to chuck around and push hard on a non-closed road, certainly not a narrow one. The speed still feels big and you control it rather than connect with it. It's just as well, in other words, that the speed still does the comfortable GT thing, as well as the lesser Continentals. And what this W12 speed really got me thinking is that I'd love to see the E-diff, rear wheel steering and all the other upgrades on a lesser Continental GT. The one with the lighter V8 in the front. After all, Speed 8 has a nice ring to it. <laughs>